It's Tuesday. You know what that means. It's time for more Stephen Sondheim trivia. Hello, Broadway Bradshaw's fans. I am Jared Bradshaw, your host of Disney Dad Trivia. But today it's Stephen Sondheim trivia. Now, my favorite Broadway composer... Stephen Sondheim sadly passed away the day after Thanksgiving. He was 91 years old. He had the most amazing, historic, legendary career. And uh, I had a lot of correspondence with him over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, I'll tell you more about that later. But this is my way to honor him because he loved games and puzzles and answering questions. And uh, so if you're watching Broadway Bradshaws and you're a Disney fan and you don't know who Stephen Sondheim is, you should know who Stephen Sondheim is. Now, for all of you Stephen Sondheim fans that have never seen our channel, I used to host a Disney trivia game show on Disney Cruise Line, but today it's all about Stephen Sondheim. Some questions are easy and some are quite hard. So I hope you all learned something today and enjoy me in honoring one of my heroes. All right, let's get started. Here we go. Which musical on Broadway was Stephen Sondheim's first show that he got to do on Broadway. Do you know what it is? He wrote just the lyrics for it. He wrote them with Leonard Bernstein, and it was West Side Story. I feel like we should have someone buzz in. <laughs> West Side Story was his first Broadway musical. Amazing. In 1957, it came out the same year as The Music Man, and The Music Man won a lot of the awards, including Best Musical, but West Side Story is an absolute masterpiece. And uh, that was his first show on Broadway. Now, the, the credits originally said, book by Arthur Lawrence, music by Leonard Bernstein, lyrics by Leonard Bernstein and Stephen Sondheim. But Sondheim had written most of them, and Leonard Bernstein was like, I need to give you this credit because nobody's going to take you seriously if we both wrote them. So it's amazing. Uh, forever it says lyrics by Stephen Sondheim. And really great trivia, do you know which song... In West Side Story, well, there are a couple that Steve was embarrassed of. Stephen Sondheim was embarrassed of a couple lyrics. One of them is I Feel Pretty because he has a young Puerto Rican girl who's 16 years old rhyming in perfect English. I feel pretty, oh so pretty. I feel witty and pretty and bright. And I pity any girl who isn't me tonight. So it's like internal rhymes. It's like crazy. And he's like, no 16-year-old girl would say that. Um, another one he's uh, ashamed of is... There's a place for us, because the word uh is on the accent. There's a place for us. And of course, someone saw the show and was like, it's weird that you put the accent on the word uh. But of course, it had already opened and he couldn't change it. Next question. Do you know who Stephen Sondheim's mentor was? It was Oscar Hammerstein the second. Now, uh, Oscar Hammerstein and Richard Rogers, of course, wrote Oklahoma, the Sound of Music, South Pacific, The King and I, State Fair, Cinderella, it goes on and on. But um, Oscar Hammerstein was his mentor, and uh, Steve got to partner with him on a bunch of shows as a kid. And uh, when he was, there's a great picture of them when they're 15 and 16 years old. Stephen Colbert just showed this picture uh, on an interview that appeared, I think, in September, October. And uh, it was a great interview. You should look it up on The Colbert Show. Next question. What musical did Stephen Sondheim write lyrics for with Richard Rogers writing the music? Now, this is something he did not want to do. He had already written um, a Broadway musical with music and lyrics, and he didn't want to go backwards and just write lyrics because he wanted to be taken seriously as not only a lyricist but a composer. But he also wanted to honor Oscar Hammerstein II because he said, you need to work with Dick Rogers. You need to work with Richard Rogers um, because you'll learn something writing with him. He's one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Do you know what the musical was? It was called Do I Hear a Waltz? There's a great song in here I love called Take the Moment. It's a wonderful song I learned because Mandy Patinkin and Paul Ford played it. My friend Paul Ford will put a picture right here. Anyway, Do I Hear a Waltz? Stephen Sondheim went back, and of course, Arthur Lawrence wrote the book, who wrote Anyone Can Whistle, and Gypsy, and um, West Side Story. But he wrote that with Richard Rogers, and it was not a fun assignment. He did not enjoy it at all. But it was Oscar Hammerstein's dying wishes that he worked with Richard Rogers. So he did, four or five years. 
after Oscar Hammerstein passed away. Okay, next question. Here we go. Well, there we go. What Sondheim musical travels backwards in time? Do you know what this is? It's based on a play that travels backwards in time by Kaufman and Hart. Do you know what it is? It's called Merrily We Roll Along, Roll Along. This is the front cover, but I actually prefer the back. I think this is awesome. Now, these are my vinyl records, and I just love these. because Look at that, how you can pop Stephen Sondheim out with pictures of the whole cast. Liz Calloway, Lonnie Price, um, Tonya Pinkins, so many future stars were in this one. But uh, this is how I got to know Stephen Sondheim. I did a little uh, off-Broadway show called Forbidden Broadway. Do you see the parody there? It was a parody show of Broadway shows, so like uh, Saturday Night Live is a parody of everything in the news um, and current events. Forbidden Broadway parodies musicals, and of course, Merrily We Roll Along was a huge Broadway flop. So Stephen Sondheim came to see, see us do parodies of Sweeney Todd, the revival, the company revival, and Sunday in the Park with George revival. So uh, here's a picture of me and Steve when he came. He brought Phyllis Newman and Maria Friedman. Amazing, unbelievable. And he sort of hates taking pictures because once he takes one, everybody wants one. But um, I had been writing him and he knew, he knew I really wanted a picture with him. So he posed for this picture with me. And then when we did Sunny in the Park with George, it was the year that Forbidden Broadway was going to be closing. And so he stayed afterwards with the cast. Here's a picture of us uh, with Sondheim. He stayed with the cast and gave Gerard notes. This is a picture from Bill Selby. Um, gave Gerard notes after the show. And he always said, Steve, the meaner, the better. And it's better when you don't say something is crap or junk or S-H-I-T. It's better when you describe exactly what, be specific and really rake them through the coals. And so I got to play Stephen Sondheim. Here's a picture, thank you, Bill Selby, of me as Stephen Sondheim. I got to play Sondheim for Sondheim. And a song called Putting Up Revivals, Hit by Hit, Show by Show, Bit by Bit, Blow by Blow, and that is the state of the art. It was a lot of fun. Okay, next question, here we go. Are you nerding out? Are you liking this? Is this too nerdy? Thank you, Disney fans, for watching along. There are a couple Disney questions here. Okay. Uh, which Sondheim show was originally titled Threes? T-H-R-E-E-S. Threes. Do you know what that was? It was a musical based on scenes with three people in them. A man who didn't want to get married and two other people. Friends, a married couple. Do you know what it is? Was that a good enough tip? Company. Company. The original working title that George Firth had for it was Threes, because the scenes all had three people in it. And then they're like, well, that sort of restricts us. Let's just call it company. One of my favorite Broadway logos. Look at that orange. It looks like Pac-Man. It's orange and purple. I love that. Um, that's the show in college. That record, actually, is from Shorter College. Thank you, John Rivest, who gave me the entire vinyl collection from Shorter College. Some of these are my own, but um, that one he mailed me with a bunch of others. And uh, it's an honor to have the Shorter College Vinyl Musical Theater Collection. Um, okay, here we go. What Sondheim musical has a rap in it? Do you know what it is? It's a rap. It was in 1987, so rap was in. Um, and, you know, rap had been in The Music Man and obviously Hamilton and uh, other shows, Rhythmic Talking, come on, all the way back to Pirates of Penzance. I am the very model of a modern major general. I've ever mentioned vegetable, animal, and mineral, right? But the song that had the witches rap was Into the Woods. Bernadette, this is my autographed copy. Uh, Bernadette Peters, of course, sang greens, greens, and nothing but greens, parsley, peppers, fiddle ferns, and lettuce. Anyway, it goes on and on, and obviously I don't know it. But the witches rap is in Into the Woods. All right, next question. What is the longest Sondheim song? What Sondheim song is the longest? Like, the most measures, the most notes, the most pages. Like, the longest Sondheim song. Think about it. Do you know what it is? It's actually a song in Sunday in the Park with George. It's called Putting It Together. This song is so long. Uh, it says Putting It Together Part 1 in here. Cocktail music, and then it goes putting it together. Part two, part four, part eight, part nine, part 14. Okay, it stops at Children and Art on 205. So let's see, the last part of it, I think, is part 17. Putting it together, part 17. 
So it starts on 157 in the score and ends at 195. That is absolutely crazy. It's 30, what, 38 pages long? This song is 38 pages long. And my friend Paul Ford played nearly every performance of this and uh, made up the, a lot of the cocktail music, which is uh, pretty hilarious. Um, let's see, I think it even says in here, the composer wishes to express his thanks to Paul Ford and Theodore Sperling for their assistance in the preparation of this score. Isn't that amazing? That's my buddy. I'm so proud of him. Okay, here we go. Let's see the next one. Okay, in Sunday in the Park with George, George and Dot, the partners, the lovers, have a child out of wedlock. That child is named, what's the child's name? She's an old lady in Act 2, but she's born in Act 1. The name is Marie. I thought that was a fun question. Okay, next question. What is the name of the cow in Into the Woods? But he's the best cow. Shh, look at her. It's a girl. Her name is Milky White. All right. Let's see. What hit musical did Stephen Sondheim write lyrics for with music by Julie Stein? Do you know what that one is? It's from 1959. It lost Best Musical to Fiorello and The Sound of Music that tied for Best Musical. Can you believe that Gypsy didn't win Best Musical with Ethel Merton Merman? Curtain up! Light the lights! So, uh, Ethel Merman, Gypsy, Stephen Sondheim wrote the lyrics for that one. And uh, he wanted to write the whole score, but Merman Sondheim hadn't written a full Broadway score yet. He had just written the lyrics for West Side Story, and she said, I want somebody with a proven track record. So Julie Stein wrote the music, and Sondheim wrote the lyrics. But uh, fascinating. That was a tough year with Sound of Music and Fiorello edging it out. Okay, next one. What Sondheim musical lost Best Musical, but won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama? Do you know which Sondheim musical won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama? It starred Bernadette Peters and Manti Patinkin. It's Sunday in the Park with George. Man, I love this poster that's ripped in half. It has the 1800 picture here and the 1980s picture here with Mandy and Bernadette. Uh, Frank Fravor, my buddy, designed that. He also designed the logo for Sweeney Todd right here. Isn't that, and getting away with murder. Isn't that cool? Anyway, love that one. Won the Pulitzer Prize, but do you know what musical beat it for Best Musical? La Cage a Foal, Jerry Herman, won Best Musical, the... Sondheim won the Pulitzer Prize. Okay, let's see. Enough of that question. Let's see. What three musicals did Stephen Sondheim write with James Lapine? Do you know? I've already mentioned two of them. Of course, Sunday in the Park with George and Into the Woods. Do you know what the other one is from 1994? It's Passion. And of course, James Lapine wrote the book for all three of these, and he directed all three of these. That's rare for a Broadway writer to also direct the show. But when you're James Lapine and you write Sunday in Park with George and it wins the Pulitzer Prize right off the bat, and your next show is with Sondheim, of course, Sondheim's going to go, sure, you can direct the next one too. So um, anyway, next one. What three shows did Stephen Sondheim write with John Weidman? Do you know John Weidman wrote the book for Pacific Overtures? Assassins in 1990, and you know what the other one was? It's Roadshow. Those are the three shows that John Weidman wrote with Stephen Sondheim. They were great friends and collaborators. Okay, here we go. What is the name of the flop play? Broadway play ran like a month that he wrote with George Firth. George Firth, of course, wrote Company with Sondheim. Do you know what play he wrote? It was a thriller, comedy, murder, mystery. It was everything. I didn't see it. It didn't run that long. It was called Getting Away with Murder. That's the other one that Fravor did the poster for with the, with the gargoyle. Funny. Okay, that's a good one. Is this really random or what? I hope you're enjoying these Sondheim questions. Okay, West Side Story. Everybody loves West Side Story. This is from the film, of course. What was the original title of West Side Story? Jerome Robbins came up with the concept and directed and choreographed it. Do you know what the original title of West Side Story was going to be? 
It was actually going to be called East Side Story. And it was going to be, instead of on the west side of New York City, it was going to be on the east side of New York City with a Jewish child, a Jewish teenager, and a Christian teenager falling in love. And, uh, of course, it was based on the Montagues and the Capulets, um, Romeo and Juliet. Um, it would not have been the same show, would it? It might have sounded more like Fiddler on the Roof. Who knows? Because Jerome Robbins did that show, too. Okay, next question. Here we go. What Sondheim musical has a score that's entirely made up of songs in three, four meter or variations thereof? It's waltz. It's all one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Do you know what this musical is? The, the waltz musical? It's a little night music. I love this one. And if you look up close, you can see there's some little naked people in this tree. Really, in the moon, you can see it. I'll actually put a picture of the film um, poster up, and you can see the people in the tree. Um, but it's based on Smiles of a Summer Night, and this is a wonderful score. And it's amazing when you listen to it. Um, now, as a sweet and facility, stumble so lavishly onto her lap to do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or isn't it rich? Two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Are we up there? Although I think it's 12 8. But they're all divisions, they're all in waltz time. You could really dance a waltz to all of them. Who knew? A little night music. I love it. All right, next question Can you name four Stephen Sondheim musical reviews? Can you name them? Reviews? Of course, the first one, I think, was Side by Side by Sondheim in the late 70s, right after Pacific Overtures came out. It was done in London, produced by Cameron Mackintosh. That was the first one. Of course, um, another one that came out in the 80s was called Marry Me a Little with just two people and had some other songs that, of course, were rarer songs in it. Poor La Sport, Silly People, Happily Ever After, Your Eyes Are Blue. Some really rare stuff if you've never listened to that one. And it's a great show for theaters to do that only have a, a man and a woman and they want to do a Sondheim musical. Um, it's like the Sondheim last five years. The other two, of course, are Putting It Together that has the off-Broadway version and with Julie Andrews and the Broadway version with Carol Burnett. And then the other one uh, that I can think of is Sondheim on Sondheim that uh, James Lapine also directed at 54 Below. And uh, it's more of a multimedia show with interviews of Sondheim. It's really great. That one's going to be wonderful to have all of those videos and interviews with Sondheim years from now, now that, sadly, he's gone. I hope you're enjoying this, Stephen Sondheim. Okay, here we go. What Sondheim musical has the title character murdered? And I'm not talking about a play, getting away with murder. What musical has the main character murdered? There actually, there's actually a lot of murder in it. It's my favorite Sondheim musical and favorite musical of all time, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Oh, man, amazing. And look at this. This picture on the back is so great. Lynn Carey, you and Angela Lansbury. So great. That's my absolute favorite, and that's the other drawing that Fravor did. Great trivia. Um, this is an old, uh, old drawing from forever ago. And Fravor drew this version of Mrs. Lovett, put a razor in his hand and blood on his hands. And so this is original art that Fravor used and added to Mrs. Lovett. And this Sweeney was written in his, in paint, but with his finger to make it look like blood. I love that logo. I actually uh, did a sing-through of Sweeney Todd for Sondheim's 87th birthday a few years ago. We all got together and sang the score. And I made, I got a cookie cake and I decorated that logo on the cookie cake. We'll put a picture right here. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And I sent it to Steve. Well, Stephen Sondheim. Sorry, Steve always was like, call me Steve, don't call me Stephen. Nobody calls him that. Um, that knows him. But of course, his name is Stephen Sondheim. Anyway, that's how he signed all of his emails and mail. But when I sent him a picture of the icing on the uh, cookie cake, he said, wow, you have another, you have another career if uh, this musical theater thing doesn't keep working out for you. And he also told a great story on opening night. They had meat pies for the Sweeney Todd opening party in 1979, the year I was born. And they put little bits of raw celery in it so that when you bit it, it sort of crunched like you were biting into a bit of fingernail, which is in the plot. One of the characters is eating a meat pie, and there's fingernail in the meat pie. 
And uh, Sondheim said that the cast was um, absolutely revolted. I thought that was a fun thing. That who would have known? I think that's pretty awesome. Okay, all right. What Sondheim musical is set in the floating kingdom of Japan? Do you know? Do you know what this one is? In Japan, it's Nippon, the floating kingdom. This is Pacific Overtures. One of the most awesome, weirdest, cool Sondheim musicals. Um, this one is so cool. Like I said, he wrote it with John Weidman. And it came out in 1975, 76, when A Chorus Line did. So, of course, A Chorus Line won all the awards. But the set by Boris Aronson was absolutely amazing. It unfolded on stage. And it was done um, with an entire cast of Asian actors. And uh, Sondheim really tried to study that music and have some um, influences instead of just sounding like a Broadway score. It's a really really cool score. There's a song that called Poems that sort of reminds you of a haiku, but it's about Admiral Perry and America ruining Japan forever. Um, no, it's really cool though. It really is. You've got to check it out um, if you don't know anything about Pacific Overtures, one of his most daring, awesome shows. Okay, next question. Sondheim wrote lyrics as Esteban Rio Nido in What Mary Rogers Review. Do you know what that one is? He wrote the lyrics for this Mary Rogers show. Mary Rogers, of course, Richard Rogers' daughter, who wrote um, Freaky Friday, the Disney movie. She also wrote uh, Once Upon a Mattress. Sondheim wrote for The Mad Show. The song was The Boy From. The Boy From Tacaremba San Numa de Fuego Santa Malica. I don't know the rest of it. But uh, Sondheim wrote it for her, but he didn't want to like have it in the news that he wrote lyrics for it. So he said Esteban Rio Nido, which I think means Stephen Sondheim in Spanish, or it's at least close to it. All right. What 1974 Hal Prince directed revival did Sondheim add lyrics for? 1974, environmental staging all around the audience in the Broadway theater. You know what it was? Leonard Bernstein musical. It was Candide. Sondheim wrote additional lyrics for Candide. He did not write the original, but... Leonard Bernstein and Hal Prince were like, let's have Steve write some extra lyrics. So that recording is cool just to hear that it has Sondheim lyrics on it. All right, do you know the legendary Sondheim musical that is told in musical pastiche, which means it sort of copies the styles of other composers and genres. The word pastiche. I didn't know that word until I was a Sondheim fan. That show is Follies, and it's really cool. Because it has a Broadway score, one of the best posters ever, by David Byrd. Um, he also designed the Godspell poster. Isn't that cool to see? Um, they're like, we want one like that. So uh, this was at the Winter Garden Theater, where Hugh Jackman is doing The Music Man right now. But um, anyway, it's an amazing show. But it has two scores. It has sort of a Broadway-sounding score that's very 1972. And then it has the pastiche score of the old songs where Sondheim is um, writing like Dorothy Fields or the Gershwins or uh, Cole Porter. It's really cool if you're a uh, Broadway geek to go, oh, to read about it and go, I see what he was trying to do here. Very cool. All right, I'm a nerd. What can I say? Okay, what is Sondheim's final musical that was produced that went to production? It had three different names. Do you know what it was? It uh, played Off-Broadway at the Public, it played in Chicago at the Goodman Theater, and it finished uh, as the name, when it was finally in production, the final name of the show was Road Show, but uh, the previous name was Bounce. I saw the first preview of Bounce in uh, Chicago, and uh, Steve ran out. I couldn't, I couldn't get to say hey to him there, but how Prince was in the lobby, and he loved that I was an actor and just flew into Chicago to see it there. And the previous name, uh, Roadshow Bounce, and the first name was Gold, because they were looking for gold way up in the Yukon. So uh, that was the final Sondheim show, and it didn't ever get a Broadway run, which is sort of a bummer, but uh, Sondheim didn't really care about that kind of stuff. Uh, after Merrily Roll on Flop, he was like, I'm going to do Sonny in the Park with George off-Broadway. It doesn't have to go to Broadway. Fine. And he did Assassins off-Broadway. And of course, it's great if it gets a commercial run. But um, Sondheim wrote for art's sake. He didn't write to sell tickets or 
um, have a show run forever. And uh, content dictates form, was what he always said. Like, if a show is about a pointless painter, the score is going to be staccato and bum, 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 bum. If a show is told backwards in time, then that's going to dictate the form. If, like, a show like Follies is going to have retro songs in it, that dictates the form. So he lived by that, and I think that's really amazing and bold. And most composers can't do that. Just go, hey, you know what? I'm going to... I'm going to write a musical without a plot, like Company, and see if it works. Pretty amazing. Okay, next one. What was the name of Stephen Sondheim's most frequently used orchestrator? An orchestrator is the person that gets his melody and then adds 15, 20 instruments to it for an orchestra. His name was Jonathan Tunick, and he's a genius, and his orchestrations for Follies and Company and A Little Night Music and Sweeney Todd, they're absolutely unbelievable. They're so great. So you should know who Jonathan Tunick is. Um, all right, let's see. Here's the Disney Sondheim question. Um, what Sondheim musical almost was produced by Disney and had a film made of it starring Jim Henson's Muppets? Do you know what that was? What musical had a treatment written, a screenplay, and it was going to star the Muppets? It was actually going to be Into the Woods, believe it or not. Uh, it never happened, but, but can you imagine Kermit the Frog going, Into the woods it's time to go, I hate to leave, I have to go. And like, I don't know, who would be Little Red Riding Hood? Um, would Miss Piggy be <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, it's a fun idea to think of all those characters, waka waka, being in Into the Woods. Of course, it would have been totally rewritten and uh, changed, so I'm glad that didn't happen. And we got a really good Into the Woods film. I think that film is actually quite good. Um, but nothing beats the PBS version, right, folks? Okay, next question. Stephen Sondheim won an Academy Award for Best Song for writing a song for what film? Do you know what movie it was? Do you know it starred Madonna? Does that give you a hint? Do you know what song it was? It was, Sooner or later you're gonna be mine. Sooner or later, you're gonna be fine. Um, from Dick Tracy, that movie was actually produced by Disney also. Do you remember when there were Dick Tracy characters at Disney MGM Studios? Yeah, that happened in those weird faces and ugly makeup jobs. <laughs> um, but Sondheim won an Academy Award for that. Pretty cool. All right, let's see what the next one is. What is Sondheim's shortest running musical? with only nine performances. Do you know what it is? It's his shortest running show. It's actually, anyone can whistle any old day. Easy. This is Anyone Can Whistle, and it's a huge flop. They recorded this cast album the day after the show closed. It ran 12 performances and nine, no, 12 previews and nine performances. Um, previews are when they're getting a show ready for audiences, but people are paying to see it. So critics came and it closed nine shows later. But Angel Lansbury starred in this. And the day after it closed, they recorded this cast album, chopped up the score and rushed it out. This cast album came out five days after the show closed. That's unbelievable. So it was very rushed, but it's still a stellar album. And now there's a um, full recording of it out that was recorded in London with Maria Friedman, who came to Forbidden Broadway. Anyway, Angela Lansbury always thanks Stephen Sondheim for saying, if he didn't ask me to do Anyone Can Whistle, she wouldn't have won her other Tony Awards for Sweeney Todd. And uh, she did uh, Gypsy, of course, the revival in 74. She did a little night music. Uh, so he really got her to do musical theater and bolstered her confidence as a singer. Pretty amazing. Okay, what TV musical did Sondheim write that was set in a secret society in a department store in New York City? If you don't know what this is, you have to look this up. It's called Evening Primrose. This show uh, is absolutely an oddity that is so cool. It stars Charmian Carr, who played uh, Liesl in The Sound of Music. And um, it also starred Anthony Perkins, uh, who starred in Greenwillow from Psycho. So it's Anthony Perkins and Charmian Carr, and they fall in love. This little girl gets lost as a child in a department store. And she ends up living there with all of the crazy people that want to escape the world and live there. 
and you're not allowed to fall in love or ever leave, and they do, and the dark people come get them. So it's sort of like a mystery thriller, and it's in black and white, and it's kooky and amazing, and Sondheim wrote four or five songs for it that are so good. It is great. Uh, Barbara Streisand recorded I Remember, I sang that in college. Um, Take Me to the World, a gorgeous duet. Look up Evening Primrose if you haven't, because it is so cool and so weird, and it was written for TV. All right, let's see. What was the first Stephen Sondheim musical that had, on Broadway, that both had music and lyrics by Sondheim? Do you know what that was? Music and lyrics, I think it was like 1962. It was Comedy Tonight, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum starring Zero Mostel. That's the first show uh, played at the Alvin Theater, now the Neil Simon, where MJ the musical is playing. But that is the first show that Sondheim wrote music and lyrics for. It won Best Musical, and Sondheim wasn't even nominated for Best Score. Isn't that frustrating? So you see why Steve did not want to write Do I Hear a Waltz with Richard Rodgers, because he was like, people just think I'm a lyric writer from West Side Story, but I wrote every song in that. I wrote all the music. Um, so he really had to felt like he needed to prove himself. All right, here we go. I've got more. I've got more, Sondheim fans. All right, what Sondheim musical did Felicia Rashad star in? You know, Felicia Rashad, most famous for The Cosby Show, of course. Uh, Claire Huxtable, do you remember? She replaced Bernadette Peters in Into the Woods as the witch. Very cool. Um, I would have loved to have seen her do that. All right, any Star Trek fans? Brent Spiner from Star Trek. What Sondheim musical did he star in? He starred in Sunday in the Park with George, opposite Nancy Opal, our friend. Don't you love Nancy Opal? Love her. Um, Franz, they work very hard. We work. We scrub their food. Anyway, um, Brent Spiner from Star Trek was in Sunday in the Park with George. Jason Alexander, that you know from Seinfeld, of course, George Costanza. He did a Sondheim musical, his Broadway debut. Do you know what that was? It was Merrily We Roll Along. He told Sondheim, I, I can't sing above F, so don't put anything above the note, the high note F. Um, and so Sondheim wrote him in his song, gave him an F sharp. And he was like, oh, I can do that. So that's the kind of teacher he was. He was like, I'll show you. You can do it. It's amazing. So that was uh, Jason Alexander's Broadway debut. And of course, he later did The Rink with Kander Nabb and then won a Tony narrating Jerome Robbins' Broadway. Okay, what two Sondheim songs did Frank Sinatra, Old Blue Eyes, record? Frank Sinatra recorded two Sondheim songs. Do you know what they were? One was, Isn't it rich? Are we a pair? Me here at last on the ground. You in midair, send in the clowns. There's a great live recording of that. He does with a um, acoustic guitar. It's really wonderful. The other one was Good Thing Going which is totally perfect because when they're singing it in the show, it started out like a song. It started quiet and slow with no surprise. I think that's cool that Sinatra wanted to sing a song from that flop show, Merrily We Roll On. It's a great score. Um, okay, let's look at the next question. Are you ready? What musical did Stephen Sondheim write for the Yale Drama Swimming Pool in 1974? Did you know he wrote a musical for the Yale Swimming Pool that the drama department did? This cast, listen to who's in the ensemble. Meryl Streep, Christopher Durang, and Sigourney Weaver. What? Swimming. The musical was called The Frogs. Um, it actually got a Broadway run directed by Susan Stroman. Uh, Nathan Lane rewrote the book, and Steve wrote four or five new songs for it. But uh, The Frogs at the Yale Swimming Pool, I just love that one. Okay, do you know what five Sondheim shows won Best Musical Tony Award? This is a tricky one, just for the um, nerds out there. I'll see if I can do them in order. The first one he won Best Musical for, I just told you, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Um, the second one was Company. The third one was A Little Night Music in 1973. The fourth one was Sweeney Todd in 1979, the year I was born. And Passion in 1994 won. Some great trivia, too. In 1994, 
the other big hit musical that ran forever and sold more tickets than Passion was Beauty and the Beast. And Passion was really the Beauty and the Beast story. Isn't that interesting? Um, but of course, the, the beauty was Jerry Shea, the man, and the beast was Fosca, the ugly one, who's always screaming. And, uh, but they fall in love and realize that looks aren't everything. And, uh, well, I don't know if they fall in love, but he does say, I love you. And they do um, get intimate. Anyway, this is a family show. <laughs> we got a couple more questions. I'm a huge Jason Robert Brown fan, and Jason Robert Brown and Sondheim were actually friends, unlike me and Sondheim. We were not friends. Just got to say that, but we did correspond a lot, and um, I'm going to miss that. Speaking of uh, passion, my last email of the Sondheim was in uh, March. I was in Publix here in Orlando, right here behind the Magic Kingdom, and they have a serial called Fosca, and there's a little boy on it, but Fosca is the main character in, um, in Passion, and I sent a picture of this serial to Steve, and he was like, he responded, oh my gosh, what does it taste like, Steve? Um, that's how he responded on the email. And uh, I'm a jerk because I didn't ever buy it and taste it until Steve had it tasted. So I'm sorry. Um, I'll have to taste it. But this is the cereal, Fosca. Find it at Publix in Orlando. Um, I think it's like from Jamaica or something. Really strange. Um, okay. On Stephen Colbert, he just announced the name of his final musical that Nathan Lane and Bernadette Peters were in the presentation of. Hopefully, he said, hopefully it'll get a Broadway run next year. I think that people will try and do that since he has passed now, and that's obviously what he wanted. Um, Nathan Lane said, we didn't know the title of it, and Sondheim said it on The Colbert Show. He called it Square One. So Nathan Lane said, that's actually a good title for it. So hopefully that title sticks, and that will be Sondheim's final musical after Gold Bounce Roadshow. It will be called Square One. All right, I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you for joining me. Um, to honor my favorite Broadway composer and acquaintance, Stephen Sondheim. Um, he was really important to me, and I cried when I found out he died. He's 91. He deserves to rest in peace. He has such a legacy. And um, for Jeffrey, his partner, all I hope he feels all the love um, that everyone has given to Steve in the last week and a half, two weeks. If you haven't seen Tick, Tick, Boom, an actor plays um, Sondheim in it, and quite well, but uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda got Stephen Sondheim to record a voicemail because he had mentored um, Jonathan Larson in that. So it's great. If you see the actor playing Sondheim, it's uh, Whitley, uh, Wilford Brimley, what's his name? Whitley, ah, I can't remember it. Uh, the actor is amazing, but Steve actually recorded this for Lin-Manuel, which I think is amazing. So thank you for tuning in, Broadway fans. And please check out our channel if you like Disney and trivia. We do this every Tuesday. For all of our Disney fans, if you're still watching, thank you for watching. And don't worry, Lindsay and George will be back next week for more Disney Dad Trivia.